Okay, let's learn how to make a rolled hem on a silk scarf. First of all, the silk that you're going to get from me is torn. That's the best way to get it into smaller pieces with straight sides that are even. The downside is you're going to get some little tiny hairs along the torn edge. So I like to clip those off and I use Karen K. Buckley's Perfect Scissors to get the hair off. They're these little bright green handled serrated blades. And I really like them. They do a great job and they're real easy to use. So I'll just trim all the way down until I see those horizontal threads. And the reason I want to do this is later when I fold the raw edge over, I'm aiming for a specific measurement. I'm looking for about an eighth of an inch. And I don't know whether to start measuring from here, the top of the hair, or down here where the fabric really starts. So I want to get rid of the hair. That makes that all much, much easier. And these scissors are really great because they grab each of the fibers with those serrated edges. Downside is you're going to make a little bit of a mess. So if you take a um, little masking tape thing, lint roller, clean up your work surface. Now I'm going to thread up a needle with bright orange thread so you can see it. I'm leaning over a camera, which is mounted to a pedestal, which is not the most comfortable way to sew, but it's the only way I can get you to see what I'm talking about. So looking out of one eye, squinting here. Oh, there we go. Come on. Okay, we got it. All right. Um, I also want to condition my thread, and I use um, Thread Heaven which is a, a really unusual kind of product. I don't know what's in it, but it's kind of cool. You take the thread and place it on the thread heaven, and then you just draw the thread across it, and it makes it so that the thread hardly ever does a slip knot. And if it should create a knot where you don't want it, obviously, then it's very easy to come to and uh, take it out. I also do a mama's knot where I lift my finger, and I roll it over and then I twist and pull and I get a, a big honking wet loopy knot which okay it's weird but I like it um, it stays in that's my big thing I'm not a fan of the rolled or wrapped knot and that's just me okay so to start I'm going to insert my needle about an eighth of an inch from the top and pull this through. That's where my knot's going to live and you know if I had a brain I'd probably clip, clip that tail. Probably should have done it before. This way I risk cutting the silk. <laughs> okay. Get that out of there. And I'm going to gently turn this over about um, an eighth of an inch. And I'm going to take a little stitch down here grabbing maybe three or four threads of the silk pull that through. Now, if this were straight up and down, you can see where the hole is, where that orange thread is exiting. I'm going to go about that same distance away, and this time I'm going to take a really pretty long stitch, almost about, I'd say, a, a half an inch. And I'm just going to draw the thread up a little bit, not all the way taut. Here's where the thread is exiting. I drop my needle straight down to that raw edge of the silk, right below it, not catching the raw edge, just the silk underneath it. Teeny tiny stitch. Pulling that through and move along. And now I'm back up at the top where the roll is. I'm going to take a very long stitch, about a half inch. Pull that through. Right below where the thread is exiting, I take another little stitch. Teeny tiny stitch. Pull my thread. No doubt you've noticed I'm left handed. Um, I could do this right handed, but it would be about a three hour video. So apologies to all you right-handed people, and I can just hear all the lefties going, yippee, finally, somebody who demonstrates lefty. But the idea is to keep the thread um, going in a predictable and uh, parallel, I guess if you can look at the vertical orange threads here, 
seam. They're all going straight up and down, and you have them in pairs. So this is where you take the little stitch down here, and this is where you take the long stitch up here. Little stitch down there, long stitch over here, little stitch down there, long stitch over here. Finally, I've ended up with a long stitch on this side. I'll do it again just a couple more times. Teeny tiny stitch. And again, I, I'm using a uh, bright orange and fairly thick thread so that you can see it. In real life, I would use the thinnest thread I can handle comfortably, and it should match something. Some of the thread will show, but um, sometimes you just can't help that. That's part of having a rolled hem. And if I can catch those knots before I pull taut, they're much easier to come out. If I can stay in front of the camera lens. Okay. My choice is either see the work or see the back of the camera. There we go. Now that I've done this series and we've got it all the way back to that first loop, now you'll see what's so cool about it because I'm basically just going to pull that thread. Look what happens. Isn't it slick? And now I've pulled all the way back to the knot, and I always want to stroke it just a little bit to get rid of any excess tension so that when I'm done, it will lay flat. Now, this is hyper uh, magnified. I mean, my finger's huge in there. Look at that ugly nail. Okay, flip it over, and you can see just barely that orange thread. You will see some stitches along there. And that's just part of having that rolled hem. Let's see if I can adjust the light even more so that you can see that better. Hard to tell. Okay, let's get back at it. And I'll show you again. So I always try and end my thread in that top, in that roll of the silk. And I drop my needle straight down below it, take the small stitch, pull it top. Okay, I'm running into my hair again. Hairy silk. Grab those perfect little scissors. And just give it a little haircut. There's also something very satisfying about doing this part. I don't know, it just makes me happy. Of course, you couldn't see any of that. Now you can see what I did at least. And you can always go back and retrim if you want. Don't obsess about this, just get rid of the hair. And and then get rid of the fuzz it left. Okay. I'm ready. So here I am, back here on the left. I'm going to gently roll that over, insert my needle in the roll, fairly long stitch. And basically the reason you're doing a short stitch and a long stitch is because if you did short stitches the whole way across, it would take you forever. You can get away with a fairly long stitch with this. This is great activity in a very well lit room. Watching TV, talking to your friends. It's just very calming once you get the hang of it. And that doesn't take too long. Now as I've been working I've noticed that if I were to take a pin and just stick it down here in the part I've already done at an angle, push it all the way down, and that gives me like a, a third hand so I can get a little pressure pulling on this and I, it tends to help me go a little bit faster. It's not a race but you know I've got other things to do. See how fast that was? Wow, two stitches. Screeching halt. Okay. And it's very important when you insert that long stitch that it's not going through to the back. You just want it to go in between the two layers of silk right there. In fact, if I open it up, I can show you that's where it is. It's not sticking to anything until I poke it back out this way. There we go. And if you need to confirm, you can always roll it over and check that nothing is showing. Now, these little loops here that you see, that's what's going to get pulled against the surface of the silk when you're done, and that will show. Again, that's why you use matching thread, and it's just a teeny tiny stitch. Okay, now I'm going to move the camera a little bit so you can... Oh, I'm not moving the camera, I'm moving my surface here. I, by the way, I'm sewing on a quilter's portable workstation, which is um, 
recycled blue jeans made into a pillow cover and it's a wonderful surface to hand do hand work on. It's got uh, pockets for thread and a little caddy for thimble and scissors, everything you might need. Okay, I'm getting a little more hair in here, so I'll clip that. The pattern's on my webpage, but it's not for the faint of heart because it has like 62 different steps, but they're all small and easy to follow steps, which is why I did that. Um, it's also great for people with zipper phobias. You're going to put in some zippers, and maybe not in the usual way. It's a fun project, and then you have a really great tool. Okay, get rid of the hair here. Okay. And we'll continue again. A little pressure with that pin that I put way over to the left that you can't see anymore. That's really helpful. Okay, slide the needle in between the layers of silk. And a little stitch. And one more long stitch. Okay, now it's time to pull. Watch it disappear. Woo! And then stroke. And that's pretty much how you do a rolled hem. And it looks rolled on this side. I guess that would be the wrong side. And then when you flip it over, you will see um, a little bit of the orange thread, because that's what I used. I'm trying to see if I can get it better in the light. You may just have to trust me on that. There, I can see a little bit of the orange thread. You'll use matching thread, so it'll be fine. And of course, uh, you have to fix your nails and do polish and all that before you start sewing. <laughs> yeah, right. Have a good time. Hold on, you might want to know how to do a corner. Here we are coming up to one. And the best thing to do is to have your stitch come out on the top, on the roll, about an eighth of an inch away from the raw edge of the new side. So right about there. And you can um, fudge the length of your stitches here, shorten them up just so that you get to that point. Pull, stroke to make sure you haven't over pulled and then here's the trick you're gonna roll that one down as if it were nailed right where it wanted to be and take a stitch right through just one layer all the way to the top like that pull that and then I unpin it from my work surface rotate the entire scarf and you'll see where I started over there and oh, just a little tug to get it in place. Roll this over. And you just continue sewing. Next stitch goes down here, just a teeny one. Next stitch goes on the top. And it is a little difficult to get that stitch in there because you don't have the benefit of the pin holding the scarf to your work surface. So you have to hold everything in your hands. Okay, pull it taut. Now I'm going to come back and take my stitch underneath this stitch right here, just like before. Okay, and I like to pull it and see if it's going to work out okay. So let's just give it a little tug. Just a wee little tug. And then you've got a nice straight corner ready to continue. There you go. Have fun.